Right now we're in, in Common Good Books in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, we are in a residential neighborhood and right across the street from uh, McAllister College. Uh, so we have traffic in here, um, readers in here from the neighborhood generally and people visiting the college. Common Good Books was started in 2006. Uh, we're owned by Garrison Keillor, uh, who's famous more as a radio personality, but he's certainly an author as well. And Garrison honestly wanted a bookstore in his neighborhood and looked around and found a nice space for it and he opened Common Good Books uh, in part so that he had a place to shop and in part because he wanted to give something back to St. Paul. So one of the places in the store that you can see Garrison most clearly is in the quotes that we have painted on the walls. Um, he chose them and uh, we put them up when we first moved in here. Um, one of my favorites is the, uh, the local favorite if you will. Uh, we're polite about it but in St. Paul we believe that anyone who lives elsewhere must have been trapped by circumstance. That's the owner himself, G.K. Uh, we're a general interest bookstore. Uh, we're very heavy on literary fiction, poetry, biography, and history. Uh, but we cover all subjects. We sell magazines and cards, and as well as books. As people come into the store, I think the first thing that strikes them is the, the tables of books that we have. Um, we find these are, are the most effective selling areas that we have. These are the books that are easiest to see uh, and the books that are easiest to discover um, because of who we are. Uh, what we have right in the front is fiction. Um, we're able to stock, as I was saying, a lot of fiction. So there are the books that everyone expects to find and, and along the way um, books that are new to them. Of course, people like paperbacks as well and so that's front and center uh, as well here at the store. Uh, and nonfiction is a very good category for us. Um, Thomas Piketty's Capital uh, was the unexpected bestseller of the early part of the year. Another big category for us in the store, of course, is regional books. Uh, most independent bookstores uh, do very well with books about their local area. Uh, we're very fortunate in that the Twin Cities in Minnesota generally have a lot of very strong publishers, so there's a lot of good material for us to choose from. Um, there have been some great books here recently. The Great Houses of Summit Avenue was a, a good bestseller for us. Uh, Summit Avenue is a block north of us, and it's the uh, street where the wealthy built their houses in the 19th and early 20th century. Um, it's uh, quite a beautiful street and, and finally has the book it deserves. Oh, the literary scene in St. Paul is quite vibrant. Uh, first of all, we have a lot of really strong readers uh, here in St. Paul. Uh, and as a bookstore, that's, that's particularly good for us. Uh, but there's a very strong art community of artists, uh, writers, and poets uh, in the Twin Cities and in St. Paul. Uh, so there are several strong writing programs, uh, Hamlin University, is a good one and the University of Minnesota. Uh, there are several lecture series, talking volumes, uh, which takes place at the Fitzgerald Theater in St. Paul is a big one uh, that draws a lot of national authors uh, and that sort of thing. Back here is the area where we do our events. Um, of course we're a bookstore primarily and we spend most of our time selling books. Um, but when we put it all together, we put these tables on wheels. And so when we need to, we roll them out of the way. Uh, we can seat people in here, bring out the microphone, uh, and give authors a chance to meet their audiences. The challenges of an independent bookstore are, in many ways, the challenges of any business. Uh, getting people into the door, uh, getting them to understand what your products are, and convincing them to buy them. Uh, we're fortunate that uh, we are able to stock a lot of books that you don't find elsewhere. Uh, so people are, are constantly discovering books that they aren't seeing elsewhere. Uh, we have very good employees who are able to recommend books to them. Uh, we're able to author, offer events uh, that introduce people to books they might not expect to find. Um, but of course, the, the challenges are always getting people to come uh, and understand what you have. Uh, but that's really something that's common to, to pretty much any business at this point. The online world is not very interesting. It doesn't have much in the way of character. It doesn't make for a very interesting afternoon out. It doesn't offer people an opportunity to stumble on new books very easily. Uh, for all that the online retailers offer, uh, it's very hard to find something there that, you, that will surprise you. They run their algorithms against you and you end up getting the book that everybody else got and that you pretty much expect to get. And so what we offer in a store like this is the chance to discover something new, something that you weren't expecting. Yes, yeah, we probably have the book that you're looking for, but at the same time, right next to it is something that you didn't know about. And if you read The Shelf Talker, which is the little write-up that a lot of our employees do on our favorite books, then you can actually find something new. And if you talk to us, 
uh, we're able to suggest something new as well. So what we offer is a real world experience. We offer the chance to meet other readers at our book club or at our events. We offer the opportunity to discover a book that you weren't expecting. And in that way, it's something that, that really we don't feel is going to suffer from online competition. But the thing that we're able to do is to go a little deeper into the publisher's lists. So if you're a, a small bookstore uh, with a smaller amount of traffic, you aren't selling as many books uh, in an average week, you need to buy the ones that are going to sell the best. Uh, and that's you know, that's the business decision. We're able, because we have a fairly loyal clientele and a fairly steady business, to go a little riskier on books. So we buy the books that everyone's going to buy, of course, uh, and we sell those. Um, and then we're able to bring in one or two of something that, you know, is a little more obscure and is we're going to have to wait a little longer for its customer to come in. Uh, so in that way, um, we have things on the shelf um, that you might not be able to find uh, everywhere.